I'm a fan of the Ego line of electric lawn tools. So I have a lot of these batteries. There's the small ones and the big ones. So when Ego came out with this guy, which is the Ego Nexus Escape power inverter, I thought, hey, that looks great. Um, it's a small inverter. It's just slightly smaller than their smallest battery, weighs a little bit less, and it will plug into any of the batteries. When it's plugged into a battery, you have a unit you can carry around. If you turn it on, it'll provide up to 150 watts out of the single outlet, and it'll do two USB charging outlets. They're five volts at about two amps each. I've never actually charged anything bigger than about 1.6 amps on it, but it's perfectly great for charging two devices. Now, if you're looking for a 100 watt USB-C power delivery, you're probably going to have to plug in your device's power adapter into the 150 watt AC adapter and, and get the power out through that. Um, I got this with a coupon for $75. It retails normally for $99. Um, but here's what I wish I knew before I bought it. Um, there's overall, I'm really happy with Ego's brand and quality or everything they do. You know, this is a nice quality unit. The big downside I see is that the power that comes out of it, it's called AC, alternating current, but it's not a pure sine wave like you'd get out of the power grid. And it's not even a modified sine wave like you get out of cheap inverters. It is a square wave, which is kind of the dirtiest waveform and the dirtiest, noisiest type of power you can get away with calling alternating current. It does alternate, it does go at 60 hertz, um, and it does work for most devices, but it's not really a nice waveform. Um, now, if you're using something like a pure resistive element, like a light bulb or a very small heater, um, that'll have no problems. Most devices, such as um, transformer-based power supplies or um, adapters, a switching mode, switch mode power supply like a laptop or cell phone adapter will work just fine with it. Um, I have noticed, however, when you have something like a fan with a motor, um, it, there's some weird interactions between the speed controllers on some motors and also because it's a square wave you have a very sharp 60 hertz buzzing noise. It's not the normal 60 hertz hum that you get from a sine wave. You get a very noticeable buzz. So I have some footage here of a fan running both on the grid on a sine wave current as well as on the square wave from this that I'll show you. So this is what the fan sounds like when it's plugged into grid AC voltage, which is a pure sine wave. That's low. Here's medium. And here's high. All right, this is what the fan sounds like plugged into the Nexus Escape. That's low speed. Medium speed. and high speed. Another weirdness when using a motor with this guy, um, using the kilowatt, I was looking at the number of watts the fan drew while it was in low, medium, high, and the number of watts gets bigger as you go from slow speed to high speed when it's attached to a sine wave grid power. But when this guy was plugged into the Nexus Escape, the number of watts basically was the same regardless of which power setting I had the fan on. Now the fan was going slower at 1 and faster at 3, but the number of watts it was drawing, they fluctuated here and there, but they were about the same for all three settings. So I don't know if the square wave power was confusing the meter, or if it was having a problem with the speed controller, where the speed controller was just wasting power and using the same amount of power regardless 
of which speed the fan was on. Um, if I use that fan in a power outage situation, I'll probably leave it on the highest speed just because that way the fan noise will sort of drown out that 60 hertz square wave hum. Um, and also, if it is taking the same amount of watts regardless, I want the fan as fast as it'll go for the same amount of watts. Now, one bonus here is it's really portable. Um, I have a blind that's an electrically operated blind, and if the power goes out, I can't open or close my blind. So it's really nice just to take this guy, plug the um, power supply for the blind in, push the button, and open or close it. So it's nice to have something portable like this. Um, it's easy to take to a lamp and light up a single lamp or charge a few devices. Um, now the other downside is that it only provides 150 watts. And, you know, that's reasonable. It says 150 watts on it. That's what they advertise, and it does provide 150 watts. Um, the thing that I don't like is that it really doesn't have any surge capacity. So a lot of inverters, when they say, oh, it's a 150 watt inverter, they mean, well, it'll do 150 watts continuous, but for a second or two it can do 300 watts to get things started up. Um, because a lot of things have some surge current. So I had this 40 watt max, is what it says here, um, hot glue gun. And it turns out this guy interacts badly and makes this guy shut down. Um, and it's possibly because it goes over the 150 watt limit. When I plug it in using my uh, kilowatt meter, it does go up to like 155, 168 watts for like a half a second before going back down. And eventually it, you know, it kind of evens out around 40 or 50 watts. Um, so it might just be going up above, but it also has this selector switch and there might be some issue with the square wave and how this thing is regulating current for the high or low. I was able to buy a brand new different one. This guy doesn't have a selector switch. It says 40 watts on it. Um, and this guy goes up to like 120, 130 when you plug it in. Um, but that is under the 150 watt limit. And so it does run on this guy just fine. Obviously, if you have a bigger battery, it runs longer than if you have the small battery. Um, so it's really useful if you need to do soldering or hot gluing away from an outlet. Instead of stringing out 300 feet of extension cord, you just bring this in a battery. Um, so I like that. Um, some people online have said that they have problems with LED light bulbs and the square wave power. I was not able to replicate this. I have a lot of different LED light bulbs. I found all the ones I had. I plugged them all in and they all turned on and ran for at least a couple of seconds. I didn't run them all for super long amounts of time, um, but they all seem to turn on and run just fine. Um, one last issue people run into is it does have a low power um, shutdown. So if the amount of power you're drawing out of it is about four watts or less, it will automatically shut down. I think it's after five minutes. And so people with things like a remote barbecue thermostat or something really small that doesn't take a lot of power, it won't just run it overnight. You actually have to have a minimum amount of power being drawn out of this thing to keep it on all, all the time. Um, so if you run into that, you just have to add a secondary power draw to keep it above four watts to keep it running. So I guess the main takeaway here is before you put money down for this, make sure that a square wave power source is okay for what you want for. Um, and if you're hoping to use something with this in a power outage, test it before the power goes out just to make sure it works with this guy. Um, ideally, I would like them to come out with a version 2 of this that has a pure sine wave inverter. Um, you know, they could even charge 120 bucks instead of 100 bucks, and I think that would be a lot nicer just because there wouldn't be any question in people's minds of, hey, is this square wave power, is that going to be noisy? Is it not going to work? Is it going to put a little bit too much stress on the filtering capacitors on my input of my device? Um, so I think they really dropped the ball in, in doing a square wave inverter. I mean, who does square wave inverters nowadays? It, the modified sine wave is kind of the cheap stuff now. Um, but other than that, I've been pretty happy with it. For 75 bucks, I decided to keep it. Um, if I'd paid the full 100 bucks, I don't know if I would have been quite as happy with it. But that's kind of what I wish I knew before I bought it.